Hello everyone. Welcome back to Fun with Fallen Flags. This is Michael McCarvel and I'm going to take you through a easier build than what we've done in the last build. Um, that one was really tough. So this build we're going to go through the Walther's Cornerstone Kit. It's two elevated crossing shanties and it also has a shed and a coal box here as well. Got it? All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open the box. We're going to take a look at the contents of what we've got. So it's shrink wrapped. So I'm going to get my knife out. Honestly, I do not know why I take the time to meticulously cut the plastic because I'm probably not going to save the box. <laughs> Opening it up. We have a big bag of parts. So let's put the box aside. Nothing else on the box, no instructions or anything else on it. So nice to get done with the last project because the desk is clean and no junk laying around. It's always nice to start a new project as long as the desk is clean. All right. So we've got our instructions. Octagonal crossing tower. So it's essentially a eight-sided building, two-story with an eight-sided top, and then roof sections, and then the stairway that goes down the side. That's pretty simple. So, and then there's also two very small buildings. It's This isn't really a building, this is a coal bunker, so it's where they would keep the coal and they would use that for the stove to stay warm in the winter. And then there is a shed. So both of these are four walls and a top. That's it. And they're both slanted tops. So they're not even pitched. They're not even up. So always read the instructions. It's important to go through that. However, this is a pretty simple kit. So once we identify the walls, the upstairs and downstairs and that type of thing, um, we probably don't need to go too far into the details. Um, since this is a simple kit, it does have two complete sets of parts. We have a, a sprue attaching all of the um, kit pieces for a tower. Since this has two of those, here's the second one. Exact same. So when we get done, we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for the bottom. And then two, four, six, seven, and then there's an eighth one there. So we'll have the we'll have the roof on the bottom section. And then the roof on the top section and some stairs. So essentially you have pieces for two towers. That was an unintended Lord of the Rings reference. <laughs> um, you can paint these as two different colors. You could swap one out for the other on a layout where you wanted to maybe have represent two different eras. Uh, you know, do like a Pennsylvania Railroad um, active uh, tower and then a Amtrak boarded up era. Um, the multiple sheds that you have, you can do uh, two sheds next to each other, next to one in a coal bin and a coal bin next to the other. Or you can 
move them to another part of your layout and use those in a completely separate role. So that's kind of cool. In addition to that, since there is two of the towers, there's also two sets of windows. So I'm keeping these in the plastic bags until I need them so they don't get scratched up. However, if you have some leftover acetate material from a previous structure, you can use that uh, with this. Um, I do. So I may do that because sometimes this plastic doesn't really look quite as clear as the acetate. Um, it does have a bit of a distorted view on it when you try to look through the plastic. It doesn't quite look clear. The acetate's just completely clear. Now you might want that. You might not want anybody looking inside the building because you're not going to detail it. So. In addition to these two bags, uh, we also have a really, really small package of decals. There's only five decals on here. Two say private property and three say no trespassing. So I'm not sure how clear you can see that. So pretty self-explanatory. Now you can put these on the building you can put these on placards on the building um, and paint the placards. Um, maybe even just put them on stained wood material and try to put these on there. Uh, you can put these on signage and not even use them on the kit at all. Use them someplace else entirely. So not sure what I'm going to do with these. Um, again, I'm going to put these in uh, one of the bags to protect them. But that's pretty much the contents of the kit so pretty self-explanatory and if you screw up one of these since this is a fairly simple project and i would consider this kind of a, a novice uh, project if you screw up one of these and you really wanted it throw it out <laughs> and you got the second set <laughs> so that's not gonna be a problem because both of ours are gonna turn out great right right so um, what's the next step? Next step is to get ready to start putting these pieces together. Before you do that, you want to make sure that they're clean. They don't have any release agent on them that uh, the factory used to make sure that the plastic uh, piece didn't stick to the mold so that it pops out nice and clean and nothing sticks to it and it doesn't get destroyed, deformed, whatever. So, um, Mild soapy water is great. Uh, make sure there's no abrasives, especially if you're going to wash the windows. You don't want any kind of abrasive scratching that surface. Um, once it's completely clean, make sure it's completely dry. Let it sit and make sure that uh, before you start touching it, gluing it, painting it, whatever, um, that the thing is completely dry before you go to the construction and painting process. So. We've got that done. We've got the sprues washed, dried, and I've started cutting some of the pieces out. So I've got eight separate wall sections that I've cleaned up and filed and they're ready to go. Now, we kind of have to plan what we're going to do at this point because you can't just glue everything together and then um, paint it because you're going to have glass windows in the building. So you want to plan when you're going to put the glass in. Probably after painting would be a good idea. Not necessarily, but a good idea. Um, also, the base. We're going to paint this to be a concrete color. So it would be a good idea to just paint this separately. And then glue the walls onto uh, together and then paint those and then put those onto it. It's just a lot less taping and edging that you got to do. Um, so I'm going to paint the base. Then I'm going to glue the walls together, but not glue the glass in, paint that, glue the glass in, then paint that, then mount these to the base. That's the bottom set. The top set are so tight that when we go to 
glue the glass in. It's going to be so tight once this thing's all together. So we may want to think about what's easier. Do we want to paint everything and then glue the glass in? Or do we want to, um, you know, glue it together and paint it or lay them out separately and paint them? Now, every time you lay them separately and paint them, then you got to consider when I glue these together, am I going to have to scrape the glue off the edges so I get a better stick? Um, am I going to have to come back with um, putty and put in the seams to fill in the gaps and then paint again just to touch it up? So you kind of got to plan. And a lot of this is just experience, trial and error. Um, pretty much anybody who's at this point watching the video I would assume is probably a, a novice. Um, the expert scratch builders are not watching right now. <laughs> so um, if you are, hey, I appreciate it. But so the other thing is where are you going to put the stairs? Okay, you got stairs coming down. You can you have some flexibility because you can put the walls on the bottom anywhere you want. You can put the side door going in and then do you want the do you want the door to go in? For example, let me show you. Let's see what we're talking about. All right. So, we've got the the stair, the um this is the front door to the bottom floor with the steps. Okay, when they built this, I assume that they didn't plan to have the stairs on the back side so that the person came out of the bottom, ran all the way around the building, and then went up the stairs. Most likely, they put the stairs fairly close to the door, so it was just out the door, especially in snow and ice, out the door, up the stairs, and then they can take a look out. So you may want to put the stairs on the eight-sided figure as close to the front door as possible um, I'm probably going to try that but um, we could also put it on a 90 degree angle from this as well and that would have an interesting look as well so we have some flexibility on what to do but before you do that you want to make sure that the base is ready to go that the sides are put together and then if you decide to move the stairs where they go, that the roof can accommodate whatever your choice is. So you want to cut that out and, and um, kind of pre-fit it to make sure before you glue anything. Also, the windows go in one direction. They're taller on uh, the wood is taller on one side and then the, sh the ceiling is short. So um, you want to take that into consideration that you don't glue those upside down. The stair section has two little holes in it. And these are holes for the brackets, the supports that are going to support the stair section. So you want to make sure that you plan where this piece goes too and that you don't put it in an unintended spot on the foundation so anyway just set it up take your time read the instructions and once you're ready then glue it together paint what so what I'm gonna do is paint the base gray kind of a concrete color probably do a little weathering later then I'm gonna glue the wall sections together and then paint them I'm not gonna paint them separately um, and some of that's just personal preference. Once that's all done, then I'm going to glue the glass sections in. And then when that's done, I'll start working on the next, the next floor. So the roof section for the first floor is going to be a roof color, dark grayish um, black. But the underside of it is going to be the body color because there's little supports around here. So if anybody looks at your building and then up, they're going to see all these little supports, which are kind of a neat feature. But you're going to want to paint those the same color as the main structure. So what? then you have to ask yourself, what color are you going to paint the wood? 
and what color you're going to paint the trim that goes around it. I'm going to paint mine to match another building that I've already created. So the wood is going to match this light buff color. The trim is going to match this green color. It's convenient because I already have the paint. But also, when you have an interlocking tower, and then you have a crossing, um, a railroad owned and related uh, crossing shanty, somebody's going to look at it and they're going to see a uniform color on your layout. So that doesn't necessarily have to be that way, especially if you have more than one railroad. But if you don't, and you want to model Pensy stuff like this building is, then it's probably a good idea that you get some color to match up. Um, same thing with the narrow gauge Denver and Rio Grande Western stuff that I have. It's all kind of a dark brown, chocolate brown trim, and it's all a buff color, a little bit more yellowish buff color than the Pensy stuff. Um, so think about the plan that you're going to use when, and the colors you're going to use, because this is going to be one piece, two colors, as is all the rest of them. And then when you get to the door, there's a doorknob on there. There may be some weathering and footsteps and, and traffic on the very bottom that I want to represent with another color. So anyway, think about the order that you're going to do this in and what's going to be the easiest. Because if you just glue everything together, including the glass, you're going to have to mask off every piece of glass that you put in so you don't paint it. That you don't overspray it with paint, uh, with spray paint, or you don't paint it with a brush accidentally. So that's a lot of masking, and masking for me has always been um, one of those things that I want to make sure I mask every possible piece, even if I have to go and do some touch up. I want to do as little of that as possible. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to glue some of these pieces together and then I'll show you the next step as far as uh, painting and the masking process that I'm going to do. Okay, so everything's been cut off the sprues and we're starting to glue some of the pieces together. So we're gluing the walls first. We're going to use the roof and foundation pieces just to set them up. They're not glued to the walls at this time. This is just to make sure everything is in the proper shape while the glue dries. Once we get all the sections done, then we will start painting. Okay, at this point we've got a single coat of paint on it, all our major pieces. Uh, we painted the foundation this gray, this concrete color. Uh, I painted the roof the same color. I think I'm going to weather that up quite a bit, but I wanted to start with a lighter color. Um, I didn't want to necessarily have all the roofs match completely. These two roof sections, the inside, the main body color has been painted, but um, we still need to tape off. I use painter's tape um, and then paint the tops of this kind of a blackish gray. Some of the pieces like this one is really pretty much done. It's not going to see anything other than just some uh, coal dust and black on that. So that one's pretty close to done. Uh, the shed, it's pretty plain. It's going to get a trim color and other than that, maybe just some, some grime on the door here. Um, this piece, see if you can see it. There's a couple places where there's some gaps after we paint our first coat. We're going to put a little bit of uh, body putty in here. Um, I use Squadron Shops body putty. And then there's a, a little bit of a high edge here. I sanded that down. So now you can't feel it, and now it looks like it's just a, a normal bend. So, But once we get the putty in these cracks, we sand that down, we're not going to have to repaint this tan color because these corners are all going to be the green color that's going to match the uh, interlocking uh, block station that we already have. So any of those cracks are going to end up green anyway, so we're going to be fine.
So a little bit of putty on that, and then we can start taping off and masking some of our green. So spend a lot of time masking off each of the pieces. Uh, you're definitely going to notice it in the end result. Um, I definitely spend a lot more time in the masking stage than I do in the painting stage. Uh, especially in something like this where you're going to have multiple colors on uh, each of the sides, each of the panels. And you can see each of those edges is a different piece of masking. So um, take your time. It'll definitely turn out very, very nice if you do. Uh, make sure that the masking tape along the edges is down and make sure that the uh, when you peel it up that you don't peel up too much paint around it. Just take your time and use a blade if you need to. So when you're masking off an object like what we were just looking at, um, it's best to give it a mist and if you're going to spray it, spray it very lightly. And you're going to do that a couple of times. And after about four coats, you're going to notice that you've completely covered it. But the intention is on the first coat, you're not going to cover it. The reason for this is the paint, as it starts to adhere to the plastic sections that you uh, want to color, you want just that area to be painted. The tape's going to get covered, but you don't want the joint between the tape and the plastic to uh, have a lot of paint settle into it. If you do, what you're going to see is when you peel up the masking tape, um, the paint is going to have seeped underneath and it's going to kind of basically defeat the purpose for masking it off to begin with. You want a nice crisp edge, give it a couple of coats, plenty of time in between to dry. If it says 15 minutes, give it an hour. You're going to be working on a couple different things at the same time let it completely dry between coats and after about four coats you're probably okay if you're if you're only doing one or two coats it's probably too thick um, any more than that you're being even safer than I am so um, just a quick tip I just have ruined a lot of projects by putting way too much on the first coat so just don't do that so one other point um, we're talking about masking and different colors and um, options and build sequence. So if you decide you want to paint your structure all one color, there's nothing wrong with that. If you decide you're just going to use it in a uh, an area where it really isn't going to be seen much because it's your first one, you know everybody goes through that and so don't be afraid to um, skip any of the steps that we've talked about. I just want to have enough information in front of you so if you do decide to explore some of these other avenues of a uh, little more advanced techniques, um, you have them so and there's plenty of resources out there on the web this is not meant to be all inclusive so just keep that in mind there's nothing wrong especially if this is your first kit my first kit I made was horrible so <laughs> don't be afraid to do your own thing okay now we're getting somewhere so um, I'm gonna use an old plastic packaging piece I usually don't throw much away. I like to keep stuff around. You never know when you're going to need it. So the roof section to the shed, I uh, changed my mind. It was this gray color. I didn't like the way it looked. So it's getting painted the same color, black. I changed my mind on that. So um, I'm going to put a little bit of brown paint and some water to dilute it a little bit. And I'm going to put it on here and just kind of muddy this up. Give it more of a concrete color. Now you'll notice I'm painting the inside. I'm painting where no one's going to see. Because I want to see what it looks like before I start putting it on the outside. And I kind of like that. That looks okay. So I'm getting a water-based modeling paint. And I'm going to dull this down a little bit. Maybe a little bit more paint go around the outside maybe a lot more paint kind of give it more of a dirty look to it I mean this is a foundation that's on a small little building around some um, railroad crossings it's not going to get a whole lot of maintenance to it 
don't be afraid to paint with uh, what you have if you're looking for a specialized brush um, I have a whole bunch of them but at the same time I use a lot of toothpicks for really fine detail I'm using a cotton swab just because I want to swab it on here and I want to see what it looks like so nothing fancy no special advanced tools or anything so I'm just kind of doling down that shiny shiny look to this thing so it's gonna be a little bit more of a concrete color when we're done it's still gonna have that gray underneath but it's gonna be a little a little less shiny all right especially the steps I mean steps are probably gonna get a lot of traffic right people coming in and out so we're gonna wanna make sure that it's fairly grungy looking there uh, we can come back with a little bit of black wash on it too but for right now I just want it to look like it's seen a lot of activity so um, I like that that looks better and it's also the other thing is you get you're getting layers on here and what you'll find is every layer that you add kinda adds a little bit more depth to it so it is nice to kind of fake the eye a little bit so um, another thing when you're adding weathering and this type of thing I just went around and dabbed it but I'm gonna go ahead one more time and hit this vertically if I can it's a very thin surface so it doesn't really show up quite as well but when you're doing weathering and staining and that type of thing um, you know water rain erosion whatever it all travels down so you want to make sure that if you're gonna add something like that definitely need some more paint that it's vertically striped there we go that's better and there's nothing uh, that you can do that can't be fixed with just changing your mind do another coat of paint unless you're unless for some reason you're gonna leave this item the original plastic color and just shoot it with dull coat or something so I don't know how well you can see that but so it's a little grungier looking than when we started so I like that a lot okay so that piece is done so at this point we're gonna start gluing pieces together um, I'm gonna let the piece dry that I just painted I've got the three roof sections that are all painted black we're going to glue the base and these two pieces together and the roof sections between them. I'm going to paint the two pieces here silver and glue those to the roof and then we'll work on the stairs. Okay, at this point we've got the foundation glued the base is glued, the two roof sections are glued. Um, so we have the essentially the entire structure built. Um, the glass has been put in. It just snapped in really. Um, I added a touch of uh, glue just to be safe, but um, just snapping in place, it seemed pretty solid. Um, so I've got the ladder, the stairs here is under construction. I've glued, glued the first two pieces and the two little smoke jacks here that are going to go on the roof. I painted those. When these dry, I'll glue those in. I'm going to finish building the stairs, give it a paint a shot of uh, the same green paint that we have for all the other trim so it matches, and then I'll glue that on. And then we'll take a look at it. Okay, so the smoke jacks are back in place the stairs are built painted the same color as the trim the building has been put together we got our accessory buildings these are built and we may do some more on that um, we're just gonna set those aside for now and see what scene they work best in 
So, but other than that, it's a neat little building. It's not a difficult project. And you can certainly cut some corners and make a lot of the building the same color. You don't have to certainly be quite as detailed, but it is not difficult. Um, it's a good beginner project, but at this point, I'm going to call this one done. Okay, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, I want to thank you guys for making it to the end. Uh, this is the very first intro level project that I've done, so um, I hope you bear with me. I know it was pretty long. Um, we will see you again for the next episode. Um, that'll be episode 30. And I would appreciate if you guys send me any feedback. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, share it, subscribe to the channel, comments. Always welcome. So anyway, we'll see you on the next episode. And thanks for tuning in. Take care.